All right, welcome and thank you for watching another video. This uh, video deals with uh, some aspects of cost behavior, uh, specifically uh, to reinforce what we discussed earlier, and that is that fixed costs in total do not change, but they change on a per unit basis as output changes. And then variable costs per unit typically do not change on a uh, on a uh, per unit basis, but change in total. So kind of the opposite. Uh, mostly what we're going to be looking at here is the impact on uh, total cost and uh, fixed cost per unit. So uh, this video is going to be made up of questions 12, 13, and 14. So says here, Swanson Company has total fixed cost of $500,000. Okay, now I would encourage you to also review uh, question number 11. This writing over here was just a, a little example that I, that I worked out. You don't necessarily, I just made that up off the top of my head, so you don't have to, to know any of this stuff over here. Okay, but, but do keep in mind uh, the formula for how total cost is calculated because we're going to end up needing it. All right, so they have total fixed cost of $500,000 and the company's variable costs average $3.20 per unit uh, across the product line. That just simply means uh, they. this is a company that sells uh, inexpensive goods and uh, variable cost uh, average uh, $3.20 uh, per unit, regardless of what the product is says, what are total costs if Swanson produces 32,000 units? Well, all we have to do to answer this is just go up here and kind of steal this formula from question 11. And, and then, you know, kind of what we did right up here, just with different numbers. So our fixed costs are $500,000, okay? And we're going to add to that Our variable cost per unit, which is provided to us as $3.20 plus our level of output, which is 32,000 units. I'm just going to put units up here. Okay, so let's bring the uh, calculator over here. So this, this says $3.20, so 3.2 times 32,000 equals 102,400. Then all we have to do is take that 102,400, this is our variable cost, and add to it the fixed cost. Now I'm going backwards because I have this on the calculator, but 500,000. is uh, 602400. Okay, 602400. I'm going to leave that on the calculator, and there's a reason for that. It says, what is the fixed cost per unit in number 12 above? Okay, what is the fixed cost uh, per unit in number 12 above? Well, Actually, we don't need that number because it has variable costs in it. Um, all we have to do to get that is take our fixed costs, which are 500,000, and divide by the number of units. And so we could say our fixed cost per unit is, uh, looks like about $6, uh, what is that, Six forty? We'll see here divided by 32,000. Oops, yeah, not even close. Okay, so $15 and 63, oh yeah, I know what I did wrong, okay. $15 and we'll call it 63 cents, fixed cost per unit. Yeah, perfect. Okay, let me make sure, let me, uh, clean this five up here a little bit okay so we're going to keep that number in mind and again that is rounded 
and it says now assume that Swanson makes 25,000 units, what is your answer? Okay, this is where we get into that inverse relationship. We're going to do the exact same thing. But this time we're going to divide by 25,000. And we're going to come up with a number bigger than 1563. I think I'm going to go ahead and take a stab at it and say it's $20. So 500,000 fixed cost divided by 25,000 units. comes out to $20 fixed cost per unit. So here is the inverse relationship that we were discussing before. Right? The fixed cost in total in both scenarios is $500,000. Right? So that part doesn't change. But as production increases, the fixed cost per unit goes down. So our first calculation was 1563. Then we changed it to where they were only making 25,000 and our fixed cost per unit goes up. So output down, fixed cost per unit up. And that's what we're talking about in terms of the inverse relationship. Similarly, you know, uh, we could have said, well, what if they made 40,000 units? Now, assuming that we're still within our relevant range at 40,000 units, $500,000 fixed cost in total divided by 40,000 units, $12.50 fixed cost per unit. So in all three of, in all three of these scenarios, we take this if we wanted to get like what is the, the uh, total cost per unit, we would have to add $3.20 to this, this, and this. Okay. Um, but that's not part of the question. Okay. All right. Let's do one more. Let's do one more question here. Uh, question 15 says, within a company's relevant range, which of the following is false? Okay. All right. So, Total costs remain the same. Total fixed costs remain the same. Total variable costs change as production increases or decreases. And total mixed costs change with, uh, I'm sorry, total mixed costs change with changes in production. Okay, so the false answer here is actually answer choice A. And it is, uh, you know, let's just go through here. Total fixed costs remain the same. Again, total fixed costs remain the same. We've already established that. We had three different scenarios that we worked out uh, up here. So that's, um, we know that B can't be right. That's a true statement. Total variable cost change. Again, in our scenario here, remember, on a per unit basis, it does not change. But we could have said, okay, 320 times 32,000 is not the same thing as 320 times 25,000, right? So total variable cost will change as production increases uh, or decreases. So this is a true statement, so it can't be the answer because we're looking for a false statement. And then total mixed cost uh, change with changes in production. This is a little bit a little bit, a little bit more difficult to understand, but it's true because of the variable cost component that is in a mixed cost. Okay, so if you're a little bit hazy on mixed cost, do read up on those. Uh, again, sometimes called semi-variable costs, and we are going to do uh, some calculations with the uh, high-low method, where our our entire focus is going to be uh, on uh, mixed costs. All right, but for now, I think that's good for this video.